today we are going to go over 11 through 15. So, read the question first. Based on figures 1 and 2, a farmer living near Site B concluded that his herd would produce more milk in the winter than in the summer. Is this conclusion justified? So, let's go to figure 1 and 2. So, figure 1 and 2. And then the daily milk production. So this is the winter right here. And then this is the summer right here. And we're looking at site B, June, July, August. So winter has more milk than summer. I don't know why they say figure two because you don't actually really need to look at it. Anyway, winter has more milk than summer. So let's bring back what that means. So, they produce more milk in the winter, yep. So that's a yes question. Now, yes, because cows produce more milk when the temperature is lower. Yes, because site A is cooler than site B. So we're gonna choose answer A, because we know that the winter is colder than summer. Yeah, it looks like I spelled summer wrong, but it's just because I was a little floaty. Anyway, my bad. All right, a scientist proposed that larger diamonds are generally younger diamonds. So larger is younger, is this supported by the passage? So now we're going to go to the diamond passage. Now let's see, larger diamonds are younger. So let's see, these are the biggest, greater than one millimeter. So these are your biggest, but then also we have varies and then these are a little bit bigger. So our youngest diamonds here are actually our biggest, right? Cause it goes micrometer, a nanometer, millimeter. That's our biggest one. But then we also have varies. So let's see our answer choices for this one. <coughs> so yes, with the exception of diamonds formed from meteoric impacts, larger diamonds are typically formed more recently. That one actually matches our table, so we won't count that one out. Yes, because diamonds grow in size as they age. They don't say that. <clears throat> no, because older diamonds have more, have more time to accumulate. They don't say that either. No, because the age of diamonds, well, we know that's wrong because it gives us the age. So the answer by default is A. So these are not mentioned in passage and then this answer choice is just wrong because we do have a list on the table. 13. According to figure 3, is it correct to conclude that the herd was fed conventional feed contained more cows than the herd that was fed organic feed? So let's see. It's telling us in figure 3 but let's read about figure 3 first. So, um, figure three so shows the average daily milk production of three different herds given different feeds. All three herds were at the same site. Now, this tells us daily milk production and it tells us the month. Does it ever tell us the size of the herd? No. So, for 14, no. Right, because, um, oh wait, I'm up here, whoopsies. Okay, so for question 13, it's gonna be a no question because it never mentions size. So let's find an answer choice that tells us this. No, because herd size cannot be determined. So we have the daily milk production. We can guess, but we can't tell what if they're just really productive cows, you know? So this one is the only option that actually matches because no size on the graph. Okay, 14. Alrighty, based on figure one, is it justified to conclude that dairy cows produce the least amount of milk during the summer? The least amount of milk during the summer. So let's see, figure one is where I'm gonna go, right? So. Go to figure one, find months 
with least milk determine their season. So, I'm going to go to figure one. Okay, which one has the least amount of milk? So, the smallest numbers are right there. That's June, July, and August. What season is that? That is the summer. Okay. So they produce the least amount of milk in the summer. Now let's read this. Is it justified to conclude that dairy cows produce the least amount of milk during the summer? Yes, because of our graph. Now, because daily milk production of both herds was lowest in July and August, yes, because the site B herd produce less milk per cow. So we don't want to compare the two sites. That's not what the question is asking. So no match to the question. So 14 is A. All right, 15. Based on figures one and two, a student concluded that the daily milk production of a herd always decreases as temperature increases. So one, look at temp. find the highest months and then look at milk for those months. Okay, so figure one and two. So as the temperature increases this way, what is the milk production doing? and it's decreasing. So as temperature increases, milk decreases. Okay, now let's see if that's right or not. Uh, milk decrease as temperature increase. So that's a yes question, because we saw that, so we can cross off C and D. Now, yes, site A is consistently cooler than site B. Daily mil milk production of site, that again compares the sites. So I'm gonna cross off A. for this one. Um, 15. Yes, site A. Could it, from January to July, daily milk production decreased as temperature increased outside A. Let's see. Our answer's here. So, but then let's see here. Yeah, so... January to July, the temperature went up at all of the sites. And in January to July, it went down at site A, but then it went back up at site B. Oh, so we do have a little bit of a caveat there. So this is general, but not always. Now let's actually see if that makes a difference on our answer choices. So. Um, oh, see, always. Okay, so I missed that particular key term, and that would make B our distractor. So that actually makes our answer D, because question asks for always, and this is time where that doesn't happen. So it proves you're always wrong. Cross off that one. Cross off that one. And then the answer is D. So if you get the distractor, sometimes you just have to look back and then you'll get the second answer, which is what I just did, um, so that I got the right answer for you. So sometimes I will try and show you guys some mistakes um, and then how to fix them. Happy annotating.